On the coast of South America lies a nation covered in dense rainforest, with a population smaller than many major cities. For decades, it was one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. But deep beneath its coastal waters, a treasure chest has been unlocked, holding almost unimaginable wealth. A series of massive oil and gas discoveries are completely rewriting this nation's destiny. But this isn't just about oil anymore. While crude brought the initial gold rush, the country is now pivoting to its immense natural gas reserves. This shift could finally bring energy independence and unheard of prosperity to the entire Caribbean region. Or it could ignite a geopolitical firestorm, threatening to throw the area into chaos. This is the story of how a tiny country's gas discovery could either save its neighbors or become the flashpoint for a new era of conflict. This is how Guyana is about to shake the very foundations of the Caribbean energy market. To understand just how revolutionary this is, you first need to get a handle on the tough reality that has defined Guyana and its Caribbean neighbors for generations. Energy poverty. For most of the Caribbean, electricity isn't a simple utility, it's a luxury. Most island nations depend almost completely on imported fossil fuels, like heavy fuel oil and diesel, shipped in on tankers at a huge expense. Think about it. These countries don't have their own major energy sources. Their power grids are often small, isolated, and rely on old generators burning some of the dirtiest and most expensive fuels on the planet. The result? Some of the highest electricity prices in the world. In many Caribbean nations, people and businesses pay three to four times more for power than the average person in the US or Europe. This is more than an inconvenience. It's an economic anchor dragging down entire nations. When energy is that expensive, everything else gets more expensive too. Businesses can't afford to expand. Manufacturing and industry, the engines of economic growth become nearly impossible. This dependency creates a crippling vulnerability. Every time global oil prices spike, the shockwaves hit the Caribbean hard. For decades, the only major regional player with its own significant gas reserves was Trinidad and Tobago, leaving everyone else at the mercy of global markets. That is the problem that Guyana's discovery now promises to solve. The story of Guyana's transformation begins in a vast, 26, 800 square kilometer patch of ocean known as the Stabrek Block. Since 2015, a consortium led by American energy giant ExxonMobil, along with partners Hess and China's state owned Si Tsui Snow Du Azi Uosi, has made a string of discoveries that can only be described as legendary. They have found resources estimated at around 11 billion barrels of oil equivalent, which includes both crude oil and natural gas. This has turned Guyana from a non-entity in the energy world into the hottest offshore province on the planet. For years, the headlines were all about the oil. The world watched as project after project came online with breathtaking speed. But while oil brought the gold rush, a sleeping giant was lying in wait. An estimated 16 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Looking beyond the immediate windfall from oil, the Guyanese government began pushing the consortium to develop these untapped gas resources. That push is leading to a major strategic pivot. While no final investment decision has been made, the government and ExxonMobil are working on a gas development roadmap that could be the true game changer. Much of the focus is on gas-rich fields in the Stabrook block, like Longtail, Triple Tail, and Turbot. The plan is to eventually develop a large, standalone project focused specifically on natural gas, which would be needed to fuel a real industrial revolution. While the exact scale and timeline are still being finalized, the ambition is staggering. A future gas project could produce over a billion cubic feet of natural gas per day, a volume large enough to potentially power several Caribbean nations at once. ExxonMobil has submitted a request for environmental authorization for a potential gas project centered on the Longtail area, and a final investment decision is anticipated in the coming years. This isn't just a dream on paper, it's the next logical step in Guyana's energy story. This gas is the key that could unlock two solutions, one for Guyana and one for the entire Caribbean. The first and most immediate impact of this gas boom will be felt at home through a project known as Gas to Energy. For years, Guyana has been plagued by unreliable power and high electricity costs, all because it depends on imported heavy fuel oil. The Gas to Energy project is designed to end that. The concept is simple but brilliant, a 225-kilometer pipeline has been laid from the offshore Liza fields to the coast. This pipeline will carry about 50 million cubic feet of natural gas per day to a new 300-megawatt power plant and a natural gas liquids, NGL, facility at a site called Wales. 
The impact is projected to be revolutionary. The Guyanese government forecasts that it will slash the cost of electricity by 50%. For the average family, that means more money in their pocket. For businesses, it means lower operating costs, making them more competitive. The NGL plant will also produce around 4,000 barrels per day of liquids like propane and butane, reducing imports and creating new revenue. While there have been some delays, with completion now expected in late 2025 or early 2026, progress is being made. An industrial zone is already taking shape around the site, attracting interest for projects like a glass factory and a fertilizer plant that would use the natural gas as a feedstock. This is a key part of the strategy, using resource wealth to build infrastructure that powers other parts of the economy. Plans for a second phase are already being discussed, which could double the power generation and NGL production. This is how Guyana plans to use its newfound wealth to avoid the dreaded resource curse by investing in projects that create sustainable, long-term growth for the entire nation. But the impact of Guyana's gas won't stop at its borders. This is where the story grows from a national transformation to a regional revolution. The sheer volume of gas that could be unleashed from future projects is far more than Guyana can use on its own. This surplus positions Guyana to become something the region has desperately needed for decades, a stable, local, and affordable energy hub. The primary tool for this will be liquefied natural gas, or LNG. ExxonMobil and the Guyanese government are in the early stages of developing plans for LNG export capacity, which could involve a floating or onshore facility. The target market is obvious. Guyana's Caribbean neighbors. Instead of importing expensive LNG from the United States or Qatar, or relying on polluting diesel, countries like Jamaica, Barbados, and others could soon have a supplier right next door. A study by the Inter-American Development Bank found that switching from fuel oil to natural gas could slash the average cost of power generation in the region by 17% to 40%. This would be a seismic shift. The vision is one of regional energy independence. Small-scale LNG carriers could ferry gas from Guyana to various islands, feeding their power grids. Even Trinidad and Tobago, a traditional energy powerhouse whose own gas production has been declining, has offered to partner with Guyana possibly using its existing LNG infrastructure. This development could fundamentally alter the region's economic and geopolitical dynamics. It would reduce the influence of distant energy suppliers and foster greater regional cooperation. By helping to solve the energy poverty problem that has held it back for so long, the Caribbean could finally unlock its full economic potential, all thanks to the gas fields off the coast of Guyana. However, this incredible opportunity comes with a dark shadow, a massive concentration of wealth and strategic resources rarely goes unnoticed, and Guyana's discoveries have reignited a conflict that has simmered for over a century. The primary threat comes from its western neighbor, Venezuela. For decades, Venezuela has maintained a claim over the Essequibo region, a vast territory that makes up two-thirds of Guyana. The claim was largely dormant for years, but the discovery of billions of barrels of oil and gas offshore the Essequibo coast has brought the dispute to a fever pitch. In recent years, the rhetoric from Caracas has escalated dramatically. Venezuela's government held a referendum asserting its claim and has threatened to annex the region, even publishing maps showing Guayana Essequiba as a new Venezuelan state. These provocations have included military posturing near the border and reports of attacks on Guyanese soldiers. Guyana's president, Irfan Ali, has called these moves a full frontal assault on Guyana's sovereignty. The International Court of Justice has ordered Venezuela to refrain from taking any action that would alter the situation. But Caracas has largely rejected the court's authority. This has drawn in global powers. The U.S. has a strategic interest in ensuring stability, especially with American-led ExxonMobil running the show. China is also a player, as its state-owned company, Sinu C, holds a 25% stake in the Stabruck block. And Brazil, the regional giant to the south, is watching carefully to prevent instability from spilling over its borders. The gas, representing decades of future wealth, has only raised the stakes in this dangerous geopolitical chess match. While the external threat from Venezuela is explosive, another danger lurks within. The resource curse. It's a paradox where a sudden flood of resource wealth, instead of creating prosperity, ends up crippling a country's economy and fueling corruption. The phenomenon that economists often warn about in resource-rich countries is known as Dutch disease. 
This occurs when a massive inflow of foreign currency, usually from oil or gas exports, causes the local currency to appreciate sharply. While this might sound positive at first, the consequences for the broader economy can be devastating. When the currency strengthens, all other exports, such as rice, sugar, or manufactured goods, suddenly become too expensive on the global market. Local producers, unable to compete internationally, see their industries collapse. Over time, the economy becomes dangerously hollowed out, relying on a single commodity while other productive sectors fade away. This vulnerability leaves nations exposed to the volatility of global energy prices and creates long-term structural weaknesses. Guyana's government is acutely aware of this risk as it begins to harness its vast offshore oil and gas reserves. To prevent the economy from falling victim to Dutch disease, one of its main strategies is the creation of the Natural Resource Fund. This sovereign wealth fund is designed to carefully manage the inflow of oil revenues, ensuring that the sudden windfall is not unleashed recklessly into the domestic economy. Instead, the aim is to invest strategically in long-term development. Education, healthcare, infrastructure, and renewable energy projects are all areas that can transform short-term resource wealth into lasting prosperity. The fund, therefore, acts as both a safeguard and a roadmap for building resilience against the volatility of the global energy market. The Gas to Energy project is a striking example of how Guyana is seeking to put this strategy into action. Rather than simply exporting crude oil, the country is using resource revenues to finance a massive infrastructure undertaking that will provide affordable and reliable electricity to its citizens. By reducing the high cost of energy, one of the biggest obstacles facing local industries, the project will stimulate other sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Cheaper electricity has the potential to lower production costs across the board, encouraging diversification and helping to build a balanced economy that is not solely dependent on oil and gas. However, financial management is only half the challenge. With projections suggesting billions of dollars in annual revenues, the risks of corruption, mismanagement, and political interference loom large. Transparency and how the money is spent will be a defining test for Guyana's institutions. If the revenues are captured by a small elite or squandered on short-term consumption, the opportunity could be lost for generations. Establishing strong systems of oversight, independent auditing, and public accountability will be essential if the nation is to ensure that resource wealth benefits all citizens. Equally pressing are the environmental risks. Offshore drilling and the construction of onshore facilities come with the potential for catastrophic consequences, if not managed responsibly. An oil spill could devastate marine ecosystems and cripple industries, such as fishing and tourism. Furthermore, industrialization must not come at the cost of Guyana's pristine rainforests, which are not only a national treasure, but also a vital part of the planet's ecological balance. The government faces the delicate task of balancing rapid development with sustainable practices, ensuring that prosperity does not undermine the natural heritage future generations will depend on. All of this places Guyana at a historic crossroads. The natural gas waiting to be tapped is far more than a resource. It represents a promise. For the people of Guyana, it is the promise of affordable energy, job creation, and modern infrastructure. For the wider Caribbean, it offers the prospect of a regional engine of prosperity, helping neighbors achieve greater energy security and reducing dependence on imported fuel. The scale of the opportunity is immense. Yet this promise is shadowed by peril. The same discoveries that generate so much hope have reignited a century-old territorial dispute with Venezuela, transforming Guyana into a geopolitical flashpoint. Externally, the country must navigate heightened regional tensions, while internally it must manage the unprecedented challenge of overseeing its new wealth. The dangers of the resource curse are real, and history provides sobering examples of nations undone by their riches. The coming decade will therefore be decisive. Will Guyana harness its treasure to become a beacon of shared prosperity, sustainable development, and regional cooperation? Or will its gas reserves become a source of division, conflict, and missed opportunity? The stakes could not be higher. Not just for Guyana, but for the entire energy map of the Americas. The world is watching closely as the story unfolds. What do you think? Can Guyana successfully manage this energy boom and avoid the well-documented pitfalls that have ensnared so many resource-rich nations? And what role should the international community play in helping to ease tensions with Venezuela and support Guyana's development? Share your thoughts in the comments below.
And if you want to stay updated on this story, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.